Oh, so you thought the Romans and the Persians were the go-to pick. No, 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 no. Let me show you true militarism in the form of these mighty Jaguar warriors. The culture in question, the Aztecs, what do we get? Well, their trait is very good actually for the style of run, right? 20% cheaper units and they can move two extra tiles. Take that Hittites. I don't care about the sacrificial altar, but I do care about this bad boy, the Jaguar Warrior. The Jaguar Warrior innately received a plus two combat strength buff. The beautiful thing about the Jaguar Warrior is that it's unlocked super early. It's a very simple upgrade from our swordsman as well. Let's try out the brand new Newly buffed Jaguar Warrior. The other really spicy thing to note actually is that the Fervor unit class promotion, no combat strength penalty from being damaged, is a really powerful one. Particularly if you're fighting back to back to back, not in friendly territory, maybe you're without an ability to heal. Very good, very powerful unit. You might say, well, it's weaker than everything else in the era. And you'd be right. And compared to most units, it's weaker, right? It's on the weaker end anyway um, of average. But man, it's so strong, so strong. Just trust me on this one. So as the Aztecs moving through, we obviously want heavy infantry. This is, of course, where the great swordsman normally sits, your Jaguar warrior, a much, much better version of that. And now aligned with it in the tech tree, just like the Romans have their new alignment. Uh, obviously, we need war summons anyway for the crossbow upgrade, which tends to be very good. So it's a logical pathway through here, I think. The same, I just can't get over it. The same combat strength, half the industry cost, an additional promotion, fervor, and you don't need to bother about connecting iron so you can upgrade immediately regardless of whether your empire is big or small. Let's send in these vastly superior great swordsmen alongside a few great swordsmen into our freshly declared war against opponent, this time manually controlling the fight so that we can actually see in control conditions, just how good these Jaguar warriors are. Boom. Now that we've cleared the way to get into the walls, this fight becomes much easier, right? They lose a lot of their fortification bonuses. See their 54 damage. Whew. Unfortunately, they've done a good job to block me fairly well from progressing through any faster. So it looks like it's going to actually be a 1v1 situation. 91 damage on even footing. Yikes. Oh, ho, ho. Le moly. And just like that, we are in. We are done. Parza is mine. Ooh. Here come some proper units. That's what I'm talking about. I want to fight you. And I can do it this turn. Okay, great. Now, let's use five of our Jaguar warriors and send them... Actually, five is kind of unfair. Five Jaguar warriors versus their... Equally strong from the same era immortals who are stronger when fighting from high ground. All right. Noted. Less fight. They're not interested. Probably because I would have kicked their ass. Or should we really, should we really bring the pain? Teach them for running away. <laughs> Look at them go. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide when worlds collide. Well, but you can actually hide from me this turn, apparently. Apparently that's not a thing. Okay. Oh, it's a long way around. Get those guys moving around. Right. This time, let's hunt down the cowards and prove just how good these units are. Really? Dude. So, here we go. The immortals thought they could run, but they couldn't hide. They are roughly as strong as me, slightly weaker, granted, in terms of overall base uh, and overall combat strength, potentially, if the AI hasn't chosen the same civics as me. Uh, but base strength, they are actually stronger by one point. They're also, of course, stronger when fighting from high ground and fortified positions, and they've managed to position themselves in, you guessed it, a fortified position behind walls. So, let's see how we go. And let's see how this weak Jaguar warrior, thankfully, it doesn't mind, does against an immortal who is defending. It's a close fight, but their extra promotions do lift them up. Mainly because they're behind the walls though. So let's see what it looks like when we are the ones behind the walls. When it is I who walls. And as you can see, 
It's a much better fight for me now. My combat strength coming in absolute trumps. I don't care that I'm on half health. Yeet myself in. Great stab. Let's send the not quite as good, but still dang good swordsman in from the high ground position for a comfortable stab. Nicely done. The swordsmen as well actually have been buffed, so credit to them. They're also a bit stronger in this patch. They're also cheaper uh, to uh, maintain. Their upkeep was slashed by about a third. So that's still pretty good. Those jags look so cool. Aren't they so cool? Anyway, back to the best battle of all time. Uh, gonna end that round. Gonna second me. Tease them out. Tease them out. Okay, the final round for this turn. It's time for our third test matchup. This time, it is a... Unlucky Citizen. Home Guard. Hiding behind the walls. How does this fight look? Actually... The Citizen, of course, being fortified and defending and being a Guardian unit receives a lot of promotions, but it ain't enough. It ain't enough for the mighty warrior. And oh my god, what a crushing blow it was. 40-something damage, even though we were fairly even. These guys look like they're just going to hide there forever. So, just going to let them do that. I think the only way to get true poetic justice here and to really roundhouse kick this fight, is to send out, again, damage but doesn't care, Jag. Yeet. Boom. Into its really counter part of a unit. Send this other Jag through here, behind enemy lines. Stab that peasant. Try and clear a way through, right? Try and find a pathway through. I might auto them just to see what they want to do. Not a lot. Still a close fight. This is by no means one, but take a look at this exchange. Uh, again, the Jaguar's weak, but it doesn't even care. It's still fighting at full strength. Absolutely just yoing itself. Uh, there is no pathway there. I want to try and bring these healthy units around and in. Boom. Three units behind enemy lines now. Even better. Uh, let's use the Jaguar against its counterpart because I think that's hilarious uh, and then let's just clean up the peasants back here with this other jag he died but it was a good sacrifice again the jag is just gonna smash into this it's a 2v1 so we can clear that out in the round of course we're not gonna bother sailing into the sea or whatever the heck is going on over there jaguar sweeps through destroys the final unit that is standing on land anyway uh, and I guess I just want to occupy the city now so let's do that Stand in their forts and stuff. Uh, maybe try and bait them out to the flag, right? Ah, oh, they're not going to take it. They're just going to hide in the water like the cowards they are. Unfortunately, now I have to end the war. Let's see how well it went for me and my great units. I can force them to convert to my religion. I'm also going to take that city that I'm occupying. We could actually just force them to pay us 4,800 gold and never worry about money ever again. But no... No, no, we'll just claim what we can, which is what we occupy, right? So we'll take Parza, we'll take that one. We will take Kerma as well. Oh my god, we will. Okay, sure. Full surrender. Boom. How did we go? Pretty well. Pretty well. <laughs> two free cities and one, two, three, four, five outposts. Oh, go you beautiful you. And that will probably uh, wrap me up here, actually. Thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you next time.